over the next few days, we are going to have to draw close to this picture of the tree to see the beauty of these angles the Word of God shares with us. Day 12 of 31 brings us back to Psalm 1, verse 3. For context, let's read once again verses 1 to 3 of this first psalm, always asking, Lord, how might I know you more through this? Blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the wicked, nor stands in the way of sinners, nor sits in the seat of scoffers. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and on his law he meditates day and night. He is like a tree planted by streams of water that yields its fruit in its season, and its leaf does not wither. In all that he does, he prospers. As we began to examine this picture of a tree, the first element we examined was our powerlessness. Today, let's take a look at the plan for the blessed man that is taking place. Verse 3 clearly tells us that this tree has been planted. Not thrown or tossed, but planted. There is a farmer. There is intentionality. There is gentleness. There is a plan. Think on this. The word plant means to place or fix in a specified position. Pass any beautiful garden and you don't see plants randomly planted. A yard doesn't have a rose bush in the middle of the lawn, nor is there a tree planted directly by the base of a house. Positions are thought out, strategically assessed, and carefully, cautiously planted. Recently, I visited the gardens at the Palace of Versailles in France, and every Corsican pine, beech, poplar, chestnut, and hawthorn tree had been strategically planted with a plan. If this is true of a human mind, how much more that of the eternal God, like a tree planted by streams of water, placed, fixed, specified position. We will understand more of the plan itself as we walk through this verse 3 of Psalm 1. But for today, just consider the fact that not only is there a plan, the planner is God. You are not an accident in your existence, nor are the circumstances in which you find yourself ill-suited for your good. Where is this place of planting? By the stream of his word. That which we have been discussing for the past 11 episodes. Are we resisting this environment of growth? Are we rejecting his plan and placement? Are we reacting to our surroundings rather than responding to our Savior? God plants us where we can do more than survive. God plants us with a plan in place and places us in his plan. He puts us where we can thrive for the purpose we were intended, to know him, to be sanctified, to be conformed. The truth of Psalm 1 comes out in Philippians 1, 6. And I am sure of this, that he who began a good work in you will bring it to completion at the day of Jesus Christ. We must not misunderstand God's plan he isn't our life coach to help us reach our goals. He is Lord and wants us to know our God. One of the most brutally applied verses in Scripture is Jeremiah 29, 11. Speaking to the Jews in Babylonian exile, God reminds them, For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans for welfare and not for evil, to give you a future and a hope. We use it as some kind of promise to cling to, saying, God wants me to have a great life. Sure he does. In context, look at the verse before Jeremiah 29, 11, and That would be Jeremiah 29, 10. In my words, check it out yourself. You're going to be dragged into exile for 70 years. Most of you are never coming home again. But I know the plans I have for you. In other words, God's plans for you are bigger than your earthly existence. This isn't merely about your story. This is about his glory. What great news. Cancer isn't the problem. 
Your career isn't the issue. Your community isn't the obstacle. Your circumstances are not in the way. You are loved. In Christ, you are planted. In Him, you are redeemed. You are sealed. You have a purpose. You are part of a plan. Hello? Are we trying to invite God into our plans rather than investing our life into God's plan? Like a tree planted. Take a few minutes to consider. Have I, have we forgotten God's plan for our lives? Am I fighting to create a purpose and plan for my life rather than surrendering to the eternal design of an omniscient heavenly father? He isn't behind schedule. Ron Hamilton wrote a song that might be unfamiliar to many, but speaks to God's plan for us. And if you do know the song, you'll know I'm jumping around a little bit here and there. God never moves without purpose or plan when trying his servant and molding a man. Oh, rejoice in the Lord. He makes no mistake. He knoweth the end of each path that I take. For when I am tried and purified, I shall come forth as gold.